Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and we are going to do a full, a quick full review on the Vosti Nightshade that is linked down in the description. Now, I already did a full review on the M390 version, technically. Now, this is the 154CM version. Now, it has a deep carry, beautiful clip that works great in and out of the pocket, really smooth, so it carries great. It's not um, left-hand carry, but I'm sure, you know, if you don't mind carrying your clip on the right-hand side, it'll still be good for lefties, just not clip-wise. The action, amazing action. One of the most comfortable flipper tabs, amazing jimping on the flipper tab, very grippy. You can do the light switch or the push button and build up tension. This, the detent is very, very snappy. I can even reverse flick it very easily. The access to the lock bar, beautiful, easy to get past. Drop shot action. It is on ceramic cage bearings and a ceramic detent. Now the spine is nice and crowned. Jimping lands in a great spot. Now, if you guys don't know, this design comes from the shilling cutter and a kukri kind of blended together. Really, it's a shilling cutter. That's where the design comes from, which I can see why they'd want to make it into a folding knife because it is such a useful design. Um, now, where it shines, the handle kind of turns a little bit, right? So the blade is aiming at everything. I don't care if you're doing utility cuts, if you're cutting around boxes. If I'm holding a box and I'm, I want to get around to the back side of the tape, very easy. The front side, the top, it's, it's like it aims at anything and everything you want to cut. And that's the beauty of this knife. It is an EDC champion. Like just the grind, the blade shape. It is a full flat grind, nice and thin behind the edge. I think it was 18 thousandths behind the edge. But it has such a nice taper to it that it passes through materials so nicely this thing cuts like a beast and the blade shape traps the material so as you're going down through cardboard the blade just stays locked in place you can get those really long nice cuts without slipping out of your cut and you know anybody who breaks down cardboard especially over a, a, a period of time you know if you spend more than five minutes breaking down cardboard you can approach appreciate a blade shape that traps materials next thing is a reverse grip if you wanted to cut straps ropes things like that and you're pulling towards you it's gonna trap the 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 thing you're cutting in place so it's not gonna slip up and around the blade like how some blade shapes will do to you this is going to trap it and make sure that all the teeth from that edge lock in there and really rip through whatever you're cutting so cutting performance is amazing on this now the ergos you know it is slim it is kind of a teardrop you know with a curvedness to it so it's not the biggest and it, it's it's comfortable it's okay but um it complements the blade really well so it winds up working out really good even though it's like not you know a benchmade griptilian or anything like that so not like it's not a number it's not a, a if I was going to pick one out of 10, it's not a 10 in ergos, but with the blade and the handle, handle complementing each other, it winds up turning into a 10 in the cutting performance, you know, area. Now, or at least like an 8.5, you know. Anyways, sharpening, because this is a blade shape. Some people are kind of curious, how do I sharpen this style blade shape? So I made a video sharpening it. We're going to check it out right now. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to sharpen this blade shape. It's actually very simple. It's going to be very sim very similar to sharpening a, a drop point. You would think it's going to be difficult because of the way the blade is shaped, but all you have to do is once you find your angle or the angle you choose that you want to do, I have many videos on how to find your angles, how to hold your angles, and all of that stuff. You can watch all kinds of sharpening videos in my playlist, but this specific knife once you find your angle you want to obviously locate it at the heel of the blade that's where you want to set your angle once you have that as your cut lock your wrist once you have your angle that you want at the heel of the blade right at the beginning of the edge 
lock your wrist now. And the reason why you want to lock your wrist is because as we're going across the stone, you don't want to move your wrist and start changing angle. This angle needs to stay locked in place. So as we go across the stone, the angle stays the exact same. It doesn't fluctuate. Now, as I'm going across the stone, I'm gonna need to hit the belly all the way up to the tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across the stone. And now once I start getting, because the stone is moving directions across my edge, let me back this up a little bit. As I'm going across the stone and the stone is hitting a different part of the edge, it's going to get to a point. Now it's at the belly. Now, in order for me to get the rest of the edge, I need to lift my elbow. So again, I'm going to go across the stone. As I'm getting to the belly, I start lifting my elbow to get to the tip and then continue lifting and lifting and lifting until I can see the tip is hitting the stone. Now, you can, if you're really good at holding your angle freehand, you can put your finger at the tip and then as you're going across the stone, as you lift your elbow, you can push with this finger into the stone to make sure that the tip hits. But in one full swoop it would look like this getting to the heel of the blade going across the stone lifting my elbow bam bam now you can go back and forth if you're able to hold your angle good enough but if you're not good at holding your angle going back and forth you're most likely going to convex if you do that now that's not a big deal convex edges are great but just know that you're probably going to convex most likely unless if you can perfectly hold your angle going back and forth so if you want to you can do my finger trick that i teach in many many sharpening videos you can find it on the step-by-step -step sharpening video i did it's in my playlist or just look up neves knives step-by-step -step freehand sharpening video and i teach it but then you can get yourself a good, nice edge bevel started for reprofile, or when you reprofile your edge, you can have a nice, fresh edge bevel on one side. So right now, I, I have a burr from heel to tip already because this is a very aggressive stone. I teach stones in many of my sharpening videos. Um, this one right here is an Atoma 140. It's very aggressive and it reprofiles very fast. You've seen how fast that was? My The edge is already reprofiled. So now I'm gonna do this side. And same thing, just the opposite way. I'm gonna lock my wrist, make sure my angle, I have my angle at the heel of the blade. As I'm coming across the stone, I'm gonna lift my elbow to get to the tip. And then once I'm done with this side and I have a burr and I can see my grip pattern goes from the top of the edge bevel to the apex because that's very important. Getting a burr isn't an important thing unless if your grip pattern covers your entire edge bevel from heel to tip. So you got to make sure you have that down pat. Once you have that down pat um, and you can see your grip pattern looks very consistent from heel to tip from the top of the edge bevel down to the very apex, and you have a burr, then you're ready to flip and do the other side. And then once that side's done, then you're ready to switch stones. Or, you know, if that's the stone you wanna finish on, you could deburr and, uh, and strap. After reprofiling and setting my new edge bevel, on my diamond plates, I've now moved to my Veneve resin bonded diamond stones to finish the edge. And now I am to my finishing stone, which is approximately 600 grit. which in my opinion is the best 
grit to stop with on 154cm. I find 154cm does best with a medium grit edge. I find over, once you get over a certain grit with 154cm, it tends to get slick and does not want to hold its bite, especially after you start using it. So I like to leave a medium grit edge so that my edge can hold its bite for much longer. And now to deburr, I'm just going to do a couple reverse passes, just fatiguing my burr. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just trying to fatigue my burr. and then strop the rest of it off. Very gentle passes. And now I'm using 12 micron gunny juice on a leather strop to clean up my apex to reveal a nice, clean, perfect apex. And after sharpening, you know, just so you guys know, uh, 154 cm, in my opinion, um, I probably said it during the sharpening, it, you know, it does really good with a medium grit edge. That's what I put on mine. You can put whatever you want on yours. I personally like a medium grit edge. I think it holds the bite the best. I think that is where it, you know, like after cutting for a while, if you want your edge to really hold that bite for a long period of time with specifically 154 CM, that's what I like. Um, the edge came out really nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful edge and it's incredibly, incredibly sharp. The steel felt good on the stone. It sharpened up really easily. It deburred just fine and yeah, very happy with it. So all in all, I think this is a winner. I like this knife. I've liked this knife since it first came out. I mean, the little details are there from the inset clip with the flat screws to the lock bar access, sharpening choil and plunge grind is good. Like they just, they hit a lot of little details that I really appreciate. And yeah, there you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.